The ban on gatherings of large group of persons is a standing order in Nigeria. In an effort directed towards the fight against the spread of coronavirus in the country. Indeed, the ban is currently being enforced in Lagos State by the state government, which allows not more than 25 people to gather, as announced yesterday by the governor. In compliance with Lagos State government's advisory on religious gatherings to curb the spread of the uh, coronavirus, many churches last week suspended their major and weekly activities, including Sunday services. Also in Abuja, the Federal Capital Administration issued its own ban hours before the three index cases were announced in the Federal Capital on Saturday. Same process of reduction in public gathering is an enforcement, which also includes religious worship centers. Well, joining us now in our Lagos studio with a social distance observation is the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, Reverend Dr. Samson Olashuko or Ayokunle, who will be chatting with us on the directives of churches to shut down due to coronavirus in Nigeria. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Dr. Olashupo Ayokunle, for joining us this morning. Thank you, moderator. Let me begin by asking you, because the coronavirus is testing national health systems across the globe. It is also testing the way of lives. But it would seem that in Nigeria here, Religious leaders are testing uh, the will of the government, especially in Lagos State. Uh, why is this so? By and large, thank you, moderator. By and large, the directive was complied with. Some of the churches that met to worship also made sure that they comply with social distance and also didn't exceed 50. Uh, you may have one or two that didn't follow that. We, we may say that maybe due to the misunderstanding of the devastating effect or ignorance of the devastating effect of the pandemic itself. However, for the good of anyone, even if you are not religious, for your own good, when you don't have mercy for uh, an, an ailment, the best thing for you is to follow the medical advice available so that you don't contact that ailment. Right. Uh, you said one or two churches might have violated that. But I put it to you, it was more than one, it was more than two, it was more than three. And there were some states, for instance, that there were full-on church services across the nation. By also states, I know of the fact that there were full-on church services, even some places in Lagos. The police officers had to come stop the services in some places in Lagos. The seating arrangement was very close. The precaution some churches took was only to check the temperatures of people and the light before they got in. Why are we disregarding this advisory? Number one, you need to commend the Christian Association of Nigeria for coming out at the right time to advise that services be conducted online. Not only that, those who think that their members are not literate enough to understand online services to hook up, or those churches that don't have the, a, a, a very very uh, media uh, section, we advise to resort to home cell services, where you stay within your home, and you conduct the service with your family members, maintaining the social distance at the same time. So we gave alternatives. If some of the churches that didn't do this, as I read from the, the, the oppositions, was that they wanted to give their members uh, the logistics by which things should be done. And they wanted to make sure that good foundation was laid 
for the members to obey government directive. Not that they wanted to disobey government or they wanted their members to come to the church at all costs to contact the virus. No. Uh, but that they will be adequately informed of all the, the, the things they need to do, not only for that Sunday, for subsequent Sundays, and for the weekday services. So uh, if any other one has a motive that is different, then you know that that was not in the attitude of majority of Christians in this nation. Well, uh, Reverend Olashupo, you may be right, but from what we saw, because we did go out on the field, it was just not a directive for their members to uh, be guided or to get the right logistics. It's, these were full services, full church services. And we do know that the, the, the security operatives could not be everywhere at the same time. But let me ask you, because you know the Bible more than I do, I suppose, um, is it not true that the good book says we should obey the government um, because God, God himself ha had put government in place and those who flout the orders should receive damnation? So, Reverend Olashupo, let me ask you, for these pastors or religious leaders that have flouted the directive of government, what should their damnation be? Would it be okay to seal up these religious houses? The, the bottom line which I've told you is that apart from even before the government came out with their own directive, CAM first of all came out to send circular to all churches, to hold services online, and also to do home cell, uh, services. If anybody acts or has acted contrary to that, then that person you need to take up. Why have you done so? For me, I have done my job. Whoever has disobeyed that instruction is the one that you need to directly now confront why they did it. Okay. Uh, another thing I'd like to talk about, and I'm excited you've cleared the air on that as president of God. Another thing I'd like to talk about is the rhetorics by some churches. There have been a lot of rhetoric concerning COVID. I've heard words like, those that know their God will not be affected by coronavirus. I'm a Christian. Uh, but when I hear things like that, when we ought to take precaution, I'm taken aback. I've also heard that coronavirus is caused by the sins of the world. And this sin is so much, we need to repent, not fight the disease. What do you say to rhetoric like that? Whatever your personal opinion may be, the word of God cannot change. In Matthew 24, if you read from verse 6 to 7, and the old chapter, of course, Jesus says that when the end time is coming, iniquities will multiply. And as part of the signs of the coming of the Son of Man, our Lord Jesus Christ, he says there will be pestilences in diverse places. These are the beginnings of wars. These are the beginnings of wars. And I'm not assuring anyone that after this coronavirus pandemic, another one may not break out because the word of the Lord must come to pass. But is the world not living in sin? The word that I know is a word that does not want to hear about God anymore. It's only their limited knowledge that they, they, they think as the end of knowledge. God rules and reigns in the affairs of men. Uh, I, when I was preaching, I, I learned that one journalist was having trouble with what I preach. You can have trouble, but the word of God will be the word of God. It, it, it cannot, we cannot preach the word in order to please you. But we preach the word in order to let the word say what the Lord, word has decided to say. In, in, in Numbers 21, the children of Israel murmured against God and murmured against their leader Moses. And because of that, God sent a plague among them. 
A serpent entered into their midst and was biting them and killing many people. And uh, that sin was the cause of what we can call today's pandemic. Until now, they came back to Moses and said, we have sinned against God. But man does not want to admit today, humankind, I mean, that we have sinned against God. You see people walking on the street half naked, and you think that God that has allowed us to cover our nakedness is glad. You, you see the wickedness, the bloodshed that is happening on a daily basis in Nigeria. And you think God is happy about that? You think, you see people, if anything religious, any religious emblem in some countries, you cannot even put on. They say you will unsettle to others. God has become irritating to people, to some people. So irritating, they don't want to hear about him. And God is the creator. He is the maker. Ma- weapons of mad destruction is what nations are building upon. But now coronavirus broke out. They, can, they cannot direct the map, weapons of mass destruction against coronavirus. Everybody is on his or her knees. You better listen to men of God who are in tune with God when they are speaking. Not a matter of argument. It's a matter of listening. If we repent from our sins and forsake our sinful way, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if you go and look, read the book of uh, Levitico, Leviticus as well, uh, in a passage, the Bible says that God was telling the children of Israel, if you refuse to obey me, I will send pestilence among you. I will send diseases until you know that there is a God that rules in the affairs of men and you obey me. But when you turn from your wicked ways, I will forgive you and I will remove the, 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 the plague, okay, the Reverend, sickness. I'll ask you this quick question before we go on a quick break. We're going on a quick break soon. It is noted, you've quoted some part from the Old Testament. Some other Christians will say we live in the redemption reality of the New Testament that we know that for we're in Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Even our righteousness is like a filthy rag unto God. Do you call for a national cleansing prayer for Nigeria? Would you support that? If we are ready for a break, we'll go for a quick break. We'll come back and we'll take your thoughts on that. You guys are just joining us still right here on the morning show on Arise News. We've got uh, the president of Chris Association of Nigeria, Khan, uh, Reverend Dr. Samson Olashukwa. I asked a question earlier. Like, should we call for you know, a national cleansing prayer? Uh, but in calling for that, some people argue that China has, is a state that truly you know, looks away from religion. But they've been the only first country to be able to beat back coronavirus in terms of medical inventions. So why we are calling for that? Should we call for that? And should we also look at the case of China? What do you say about this? Number one, China has not got any established cure for coronavirus. If my understanding in line with what I've read today in the news media is anything to go by. They are still doing trials and trials and trials. Though the number of the people infected is going down. It is due to certain precautions that they have taken in order to reduce contact and the spread of the disease due to the knowledge God has given to man. Man may deny God, but nobody can deny the part of God that is in them because God is the creator. China what the China that you said didn't believe in God or whatever are sold to the world is coronavirus from Wuhan. Is that a blessing or a cause? It's not a cause. I mean, it's not a blessing. It's a cause from a, a nation that does not pray, that does not emphasize God. They believe in technology. But when the problem came, 
Technology can solve the problem. It has killed a lot of people. Uh, however, we believe in God, not that we also don't believe that God can refuse certain knowledge to man in, in, in terms of technology. But the more he refused to us, the more we must honor him. The more we must obey him. God is not an external force. God is within us and he wants all to recognize that he is within us. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. And also, in line with the circular sent out by Christian Association of Nigeria, you, you saw that we declare Sunday 22nd and 29th National Days of Prayer against this pandemic, that if it is the wrath of God, God should be merciful. If we return from our wicked ways, the Bible says in, 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 in Chronicles that God will forgive us our sins. He will, he will now answer our prayers and remove the evil from our midst. So, my, 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 my listeners, sin is repugnant to God. God cannot cope with it. And in so many ways, we suffer for our sins. The denier of it will make the sovereign to continue. But if we can just remove the arrogance, arrogance against God is too much. We don't want to hear about God in our lives again. We are as he is the creator. He is the beginning of all things and is going to be the ending of all things. So if we can just remove the arrogance, the little we know, we are so arrogant about it that we don't know, want to hear anything anymore about God. God is not a remote force or being. God is a God of now. He can do anything. In him, all things consist. And this is what people that want to move forward, who want to do well here on heart and have a place with him when they finish their journey here, to believe and embrace. Okay. Don't have one-sided knowledge of thinking that you are God to yourself okay. and you don't need God. Reverend we need God. Dr. We need Alaska. to seek his face for intervention. Mm. Prayer works wonders. Indeed. If God doesn't have answer prayer, he will not encourage us to pray. Well, Reverend Dr. Lashapo, faith without work is also uh, nothing, we are told by the good books as well. But let me ask, ask you now, since we, are, we have gotten to this point where we are seeing religious leaders flout this directive by government, and we have another Sunday beckoning uh, in a matter of days, what are the extra measures CAN is going to take to ensure that these directives are adhered to? This is not the fight for any government to do alone. It is a fight for all of us. Secondly, as coronavirus changed the way of lives and impacts, wreaks havoc on businesses and economy, people are being affected. Is there any measure uh, by the umbrella body of Christians in Nigeria, which you had, to cushion the effects for your members as the economy, you know, may be bowing to pressure of COVID-19? Yeah, the first, the, the first question you asked was about... Uh, Extra measures to ensure that this directive are adhered to. For the, instance, in Lagos, the, the, you cannot yeah. gather more than 25 people. What's going to happen? Oh, faith-based organizations appeal to the conscience of their believers. We don't have police to do enforcement. We tell them we appeal to their consciences to obey the rules of hygiene and all what the medical experts have given us, the Minister of Health, the State Commissioners for Health. Let's obey in our circular to them, even before the government came out. You saw the rules of hygiene which we put there. I think the first commendation will be to commend Khan for being proactive, coming out before the government to say that shut down worship uh, services where you are many, go into online services, do self group meetings, and also obey the rules of hygiene, get the sanitizers, 
God, get the water and soap to wash hands. Keep this down from yourself. These are the things we came out to say before the government came out. So that is to show our proactiveness and our, our foresight, which you journalists need to commend. When you commend them, you are encouraging people to do better in, in, the, in the, near, the nearest future. So, I, so we have done our own. The enforcement belongs to government. Khan does not have the power of enforcement than to appeal to the consciences of people. And I'm still using this opportunity to urge church leaders to make sure that they comply with all the directives given by the Christian Association of Nigeria and the government in order to curtail the spread of this uh, virus in our land. We are a densely populated country, and we, also, we are also an embracing people. We embrace ourselves. But the, the Bible says there is time for everything. There is a time for it to embrace, and there is a time to see from embracing. One of such periods where we are, when we need to see from embracing is now because we need to wage war against this pandemic so that it doesn't destroy large majority of people. So I encourage the government to, in wisdom, enforce this rule without adding to the problem. Let them do it sensibly and respectfully also. And uh, in terms of cushioning the effect, the appeal is being made to churches, local churches, because Khan is not central bank, doesn't manufacture money, and it doesn't have companies that are making profits. But from local churches collections, let all the church leaders make sure that they cushion the effect of the short aim that has been done. And also I'm appealing to government. Government needs to come out with their own plan, very big plan. The commonwealth of the nation is in the hands of government. And you see what the American government has done? Three trillion, two trillion dollars has been yammered by government to cushion the effect of the stay at home uh, as a result of the pandemic. I want our government to come out decisively like that also and use our common weight to cushion the effect of this uh, coronavirus as the church leaders in their local settings take the meeting from, I mean, take, I mean, informed decision to cushion the effect of people's inability to go to their businesses by providing uh, relief materials for them. Right. Uh, I'm very excited about, you know, what the can, what CAN will be doing as regards measures and the likes. And thank you so much for also talking to us about uh, what the local churches are doing. But most importantly, I want you to speak to every family out there as the authority called CAN. What should they be doing now? Even as they are staying at homes, you're telling them to have their Bible devotional time. What word of succor would you have for them? As I said, tough times never last, as one writer has said. But tough people do. People should not panic. Because people that panic and cowards the fear, they die many times before their death. When obey the rules of hygiene that has been specified, and when you discover that you are not feeling well, please go and consult the medical practitioners, let them give you a directive on the next step to take. And uh, for people, our uh, people who just came from travels, like I did for my staff, when they came back, we put them under isolation in their homes for 14 days. After one finished seven days, he has never been so tied down like that in his life. He was calling me, I said, ah! Seven days is enough. I say seven days was not recommended by the doctors. They are experts. They have studied the, the lifespan of this virus and how it works. 
14 days is 14 days, no more, no less. So you remain indoor. I'm seeking the face of God, be praying, be reading your Bible, and uh, the, the, the siege will be over. So let people know that this is not the first time pandemic will come. But by the grace of God, who is, who is merciful, he doesn't keep his anger forever. He will speak. Just a word from him will make things to come to an end. Thank you very much, you. Reverend Olashu, for, for coming this morning. We do commend your proactiveness as CAN. We have been following the developments CAN has been taking. I really appreciate it.